Welcome back to the show, and thank you so much for joining us for another week and another episode. But before we get into this episode, we actually have to throw it back to last week, episode 99, where Alex and I gave a post-show update for myself now that I'm 30 weeks post-show to talk over what's changed as well as to catch you up on what all has gone on since the last update post-show. And we answered some of your questions at the end of that podcast as well. And coming into this episode 100, which is so so exciting. We are going to have that part two of post show where I'm going to be talking specifically about the factors that have helped me post show as well as I'm transitioning to not having another show on the horizon, which hasn't been the case for about six or seven years. So I'll catch you guys on the inside. We are diving straight into this one. So the things that have helped me, and number one is having been through it before. We do have a competitor series on this podcast about what to expect as a first-time competitor, and we also go over post-show. But even if you've listened to that podcast and you've been prepared, you can't really know what to expect unless you've gone through it. It is quite the experience of just navigating from one extreme and trying to find what your lifestyle is. Is, whether you're doing another show or not, it's quite difficult when you are going through that transition. So having been through it multiple times before really helped me set myself up for success because I knew to a certain degree what to expect. Every time post-show can be very different, but I knew what to expect for the gist of it. And then I knew that I had the tools going into the unknowns that I could be able to navigate through those and be able to, you know, just get after them as a whole. So going through it before was 100% so, so helpful. But the other aspect is focusing on my health. So regardless of if I was going into an improvement season and plan to get up on stage next year or the following year, uh, or like the case that I am in now of not planning on getting on stage really anytime soon slash if all, uh, I would still choose to focus on my health. And that has been the focus throughout each of my preps as well as after my show of making sure that my health is in the best spot. Because regardless of what my goals or aspirations were within competing, I wanted to make sure that I had longevity within competing, as well as if I decided competing was no longer for me, my health was in a good spot that I could still accomplish other goals that I might have in the future. And I can't thank Alex enough for keeping me healthy throughout my preps and after preps and just being able to put me in the most ideal spot. But when we talk about focusing on health, I focused on my hormonal health, my physical health, my mental health, and that includes focusing on the self-care that I was doing. So number one priority was being able to get my cycle back and getting hormones in the absolute best line. And so what we did for that is prep was quite, quite the experience. It was extremely difficult, not only because of where my food had to go or how much cardio I had to have in place, but I simply had far too much on my plate while also trying to prep. And again, anyone who has prepped knows what a time commitment that it is. And just that there's very little time for other aspects within your day. So I was, you know, really pushing the envelope with how much my body, how much stress my body was under. And so being able to really focus on getting some rest those first few weeks post-show. And I think I rested maybe like four or five days after the show of not training and just focusing on walks. And we talked about this in the last episode of that my walks, basically all my cardio got dropped and it got moved to outside walks. But I do want to go ahead and put a little asterisk there that it's not that all of my cardio got removed because we knew how much I was doing. We had measured every single metric within prep. We knew how much I was doing when it came to steps, when it came to cardio, what my heart rate was at. And because, again, recovery and my health were the top priorities, being able to then move those to outside walks allowed me to have a different focus as well as get sunshine, which is so 
insanely important, that vitamin D, getting movement, fresh air, all of that. It was really the switch that I needed, not only to dedicate myself to it because I don't know if I could have walked down the stairs to that treadmill one more time, but I needed a change of scenery and a change of pace. And again, recovery needed to be the priority. And so being able to ensure that my hips were in the best spot, if I'm walking on a flat ground instead of a treadmill that is raised, um, and just being able to, again, get all of those benefits from walking outside. So things like that, as well as not forcing myself to get right back into the heaviest training. Now, I definitely did, and we talked about it in last episode, get straight into some hypertrophy training, but I guess I shouldn't say straight. It took some time to get there. So like I said, those four or five days after prep had ended, I took to rest and to recover. We had some travel coming up to go to another show um, for other competitors that we had there. And so really just making sure that I was getting steps in, I was still hitting my food and showing up for myself. And this is something that we tell all competitors is after your show ends, go ahead and tack on six to eight more weeks to act like you're still in prep. Because setting yourself up and having the diligency in that six to eight weeks is going to set you up to be able to have so much more flexibility, but also to feel so much better as well. Because you are, again, nailing down those metrics and optimizing your body and not throwing a million variables at the wall. When you're in prep, every variable is locked down. And so then when you go into a situation where you're moving around all these variables and you're saying, oh, I'm not going to track as much, I'm going to go out to eat a ton, I'm going to be completely out of my schedule, that's a lot for your body to handle. So we were just focusing on what are a few factors that we can still keep a routine, still being able to hit my food, get my movement in and train, but going about it in a way that I was still able to stick to the plan, but it also was focused on what my specific needs are. So yours might not mimic what worked for me or within the things that helped me post-show or even what worked for me to get to where I was or to be able to recover post-show. So always take that into consideration. Each person is different. We have such different genetic makeups and backgrounds and experiences. We have different diet histories. We have different everything. So don't try and say, hey, this is exactly what I should do. Really being able to take these tips and these aspects that I'm going over and see how they can apply to you and how you can show up for yourself because you can still show up for your health and focus on your health uh, regardless if it's the same way that I went about it. So really being able to focus on getting my cycle back focus on that recovery, and still being able to stick to a plan and keep those variables in place that were going to help me be successful long term. Now, going into the next thing that really helped me was having a coach. And with having a coach came having a plan because post-show, again, you can feel very lost and you're working towards a big goal and it's all consuming. And when you get there, and regardless of if you hit the goal you're supposed to or not, it can still be really difficult on the back end. So you heard me right, regardless of if you hit your goal or not, it can still be really difficult on the back end. I've had huge goals that I've gone for and reached in a accomplish and still have a really hard time coming off of that goal because sometimes you only look at that one goal and then when you reach it, it's kind of like you're in this like, what do I do now phase? And so coming off of that and not hitting the goal I had of getting on that national stage and getting my pro card, it put me in a spot that having a coach that again, knew my circumstance and knew where my goals were going moving forward and then had the expertise to get me to where I needed to go. He was able to formulate a plan and put it together and tell me what to do. And that's honestly exactly what I needed. And I've talked on that before on having a coach is so helpful for me because then I can just implement or execute the plan. And I don't have to think a lot. I just have to do. And I'm really good at following directions, really good at implementing a plan. And especially in a time that's highly emotional post-show, again, your hormones are trying to regulate. You've spent so much time working towards this goal, you're having to redefine what is filling up your time and what your identity is. That was something of just having a plan to follow and not having to sit and second guess it or not having to try and make sense of all of these variables when, again, my emotions were extremely high. So having Alex as a coach was so, so, so extremely helpful and still is to this day to be able to know, hey, I have a plan that I can trust and follow. I can focus on different aspects of my life and 
and we get to where we want to go here. Now, those might be pretty typical things that you've heard as far as focusing on your health or hormones, having gone through it before, having a coach and a plan. So now I'm going to dive into a few of the other aspects that have personally helped me, especially again within transitioning to not having a goal within competing. And a big part of this is having an honest conversation with yourself. And again, I talked about this in the last episode of it got to a point that the cons outweighed the pros. And I really can't emphasize enough. I always want to give a disclaimer or put a huge asterisk to just say all of the positive benefits I got from competing. And me saying that the cons outweigh the pros at this point in my life does not take away from the amount of times that the pros outweighed the cons. It's just being realistic with myself and honest with myself about where I am in life now. And that was probably one of the hardest parts, especially because I had really wanted to accomplish this goal. And it had felt like I was just so close and things didn't align. And I I just came to the realization of I can't put this effort in to be elite anymore. I knew what it took to be elite. After six or seven years of doing every single thing, tracking every single matri- metric, that's something that I understand what it takes to get to that physique. I understand what it takes to get to that level of leanness. For six or seven years, I counted every single macro, weighed all of my food, got my training days in, and followed the plan to a T. For seven years, I know what it takes to get to that physique, and honestly, I'm not willing to do that anymore. And that's not a knock on myself or how hardcore I am or my capabilities. It's, again, having that honesty with myself and being able to truly admit to myself that that's not something that fits into my life. And that is the core of what's been helpful within making this transition is recognizing what I do want from my life. And what's really comforting is that I don't need to compete to still be fit or still be lean. I think that oftentimes people who do compete or spend a lot of their time competing, they've measured themselves on this ruler for so long of what it takes to be elite or what it takes to succeed. And that ruler is measuring a lot of metrics that aren't going to be applicable to the new ruler that you need to be measuring your life on because there's different effort going in and there has to be different expectations as well. And so really being able to have that mindset and recognize if I'm not willing to put in that effort, that doesn't make me any less than, but I'm realistic. I'm not willing to put in that effort. I can't expect that outcome. And so being able to shift my mindset has allowed me to, again, not measure myself on that ruler. So we ha- I had some questions as far as how I felt within my physique of not stepping on stage again and what goals I have or if I've struggled within not having those goals. And there's, of course, times where it's difficult as you're gaining weight and your body is changing. And I'll I'll never try to minimize those difficulties. But again, being honest with what my new goals are and what's that going to take for me and then judging myself on a new ruler or by a new set of metrics. Because being successful or following the plan or executing the plan is no longer hitting every macro to an absolute T, it is going to be living a healthy and balanced lifestyle. And that still includes tracking macros most days for me and still hitting them rather closely. But there is a much different intent that I'm taking towards food and towards training than I have in the past. And a big part of the transition as well was that, like I said, I was extremely, extremely overrun within prep. I had far too much on my plate. And that was a really big light bulb moment of, hey, if I want to give my all to physique development, and if I want this to grow, and I want this to be the thing I pour into, I can't have both. And not that you can't be successful in other things in life while still competing. There are people that do do it. But for myself, in order to really give everything I needed, and my new goal of being able to really work on physique development and give 
everything to PD, I realized that those were competing priorities within competing and physique development. And it was so, so clear when I was in the thick of it, of recognizing I'm having to spend all of this time when it comes to posing, prepping my food, uh, training, doing my cardio, and so on and so forth. All of this time that I feel like I would rather be spending it doing something else or that I don't have enough time for the other things I want to do. And that was a hard light bulb to accept. But once I did accept it and allowed myself to not feel bad about it, again, goals can change and that's okay. What you want for your life can change. And I decided to not hold myself to a standard of what I wanted or what worked for me in the past, as well as not holding myself to a standard of what would make someone else happy. Because there are plenty of people telling me that I I had this great physique, and if I were to keep going, that I could be on elite stages. And I realized that as well. This is the leanest that I ever got. And there were things I learned and saw about my physique that were absolutely incredible to me and so inspiring even to myself of being able to see like, holy crap, that's my body. And it was the coolest experience, but it also opened the door for what potential lied ahead and or laid ahead. Laid? One of those words. What potential that could happen down the road. But I had to, again, make peace with potential versus what my goals were, again, versus what I wanted to spend my time doing. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. And there's ways that you can go about this within also giving yourself space and being able to to really protect your peace or have self-preservation. And a few ways I go about that is, again, not judging myself on the same ruler. That's a huge one of just having different metrics to judge myself by. But then also being able to recognize that I, again, didn't owe anything to anyone and I just had to do what was best for myself. I find that oftentimes we get so tripped up in what our mind is telling us or possibly what other people are telling us or a narrative that we've built out that doesn't need to be there. While some people could theoretically be upset that I was not competing any longer or think that I should or should not do one thing or the other, it was, again, what I wanted for my life. And so not talking about it as frequently was actually one way that I practiced self-preservation. While I was still posting post-show updates as far as my physique goes and being able to let you guys in a little bit more on how I was navigating or what I was feeling. Feeling, a lot of the time it was after the fact and it was because I was giving myself space without feeling like I had immediately tell someone, express my feelings and know exactly what my feelings were because I knew that there were going to be a lot of feelings and a lot of emotions and I needed to be able to process it by myself before going outward with it. So not talking about it as much was huge um, as well as being able to have clear conversations with those around you of what you need. People can't help you if they don't know. And again, that's what I always repeat to myself of if I'm ever frustrated of like, why did that person not do this? It's like no one, if they don't know it, how can they do it? And so being able to talk to Alex and just saying like, hey, this is what I need from you as a spouse right now, um, or being able to talk to my family and saying, this is what I need from you, or this is how I want to go about things. I even got questions from my family of when are you, does this mean you're going to go back to eat? eating normal or when are you going to eat normal again? And I was able to say like, hey, competing or not, I have found a lifestyle and a way of eating that works for me. Am I going to have more flexibility? For sure, just because the new goal I have allows a little bit more flexibility in the body fat slash food intake space. But being able to, again, be clear of this doesn't mean that I'm going all in on whatever you think that my life should look like. Again, holding up what I 
want out of life. And so being able to kind of cut comments when they're said and being able to just move on from them or again, just not bringing things up. So I didn't talk about my physique a lot around anyone and I just went about my day because it's also the less you talk about something or bring attention to something, the less attention it's likely going to get. Now, I know not everyone is that way and I do even have friends that get some pretty you know, unsettling comments from family members and from people around them or if you're going into a job and that job, again, does not understand bodybuilding. And I even recall of looking um, when I went to a commercial gym of there were guys that would make comments on my body changing because my body would be changing. I mean, it would be 20 pounds lighter one time they saw me and 20 pounds heavier another time that they saw me and making comments about me gaining weight or whatever it may be. But I was always able to deal with that by contextualizing and again, coming to terms with they don't know what my goals are. And there's so many times I even had a client recently where somebody approached her at the gym and told her how she should do something. And she was telling me about it. And she basically was like, you don't know what my goals are. So like, you really can't give advice without context or make a comment without context. And once I realized that, because I had to get comfortable with that, with going to a commercial gym and people seeing me and my weight change publicly, of realizing that I have my goals and I am going to accomplish those goals. And if I let someone who does not know my goals, does not know my circumstance, does not know anything about me, even if they do know something or think they know something about me, if I'm going to let them determine what I'm trying to accomplish, then I've already lost. And so I don't want to lose. And so being able to, again, get really honest with what I want out of myself and really clear on my goals and what I have for myself, then the other opinions and thoughts really don't matter as much. And they're much easier to glide off as well as I really do just separate myself from people who are going to make comments that are negative or they are just extremely negative people. I, I don't need to spend a ton of time around those type of pe people. Now, I will say it is difficult because your body changes and then your clothes change as well. And I was always a very conscientious of not buying smaller clothes while I was in prep because I knew it would make coming out of prep that much harder. I knew that prep lean was an extreme and I really never bought clothes to fit me at my leanest self. But over the years, my body has changed and been able to stay leaner at a heavier weight. And that's been absolutely awesome. And again, I know what effort it took to see the results that I did have. But then, coming into now, I'm actually really happy with how my body is looking. Now, there has been a whole slew, if you've been listening to the podcast, of crazy things going on in life. So stress has been high. Um, emotions have been high. There's been things going on. But regardless of all of that, I am able to see the context of all of that happening and still be really happy with, again, what, where my physique is at and realizing that my clothes aren't all going to fit the new physique that that I have. But again, liking the physique that I have makes it so much easier to not even care if the clothes fit or not outside of the ones where I'm just like, they literally do not sell that anymore and I can't even buy it in a bigger size. Um, but being in the spot where I'm able to recognize like those clothes, I'm not meant to fit those clothes. Clothes are meant to fit me. And I know that's much, much easier said than done. But honestly, if I try on a pair of clothing, um, I tried on a pair of pants the other day and they were far too small. Like regardless of if I go into a diet in a few months or not, like those pants are likely just not ever going to fit me again. Instead of holding on and and wishing and hoping, I made peace and I said, these are going to freaking Goodwill and someone else are, is going to love these pants because they're a favorite pair of leather pants for me. But these are, literally are not going to fit me. And there's no reason it should be adding clutter to my closet. And then also adding clutter to my mind of me feeling like I should be able to fit into that size or my body should shrink to be able to fit my clothes. Um, now, I will say that one thing that did help is that I had a spouse that was so understanding, not only after me vocalizing what was going to be helpful for me, but because he has always been so positive and so reassuring for any of the changes 
changes my body has had. In fact, we both like me better when I'm not as lean, not only personality-wise, because I'm a lot more fun to be around, but also just we both like the look of a little bit more body fat on my physique. And again, that was something I had to realize of the way that you look when you're stage lean, while it's so extremely impressive and cool, that is not ever a physique that I felt looked really great and close. And that could be part of the reason, uh, part of that could be because I never bought clothes to truly fit that physique. And that could be a little mind hack for you or a life hack for you. But I just never felt like I loved the way my body looked in clothes and the way I wanted to present it. Again, I looked freaking awesome when I was in next to no nothing, uh, but that was a different parallel from I spend most of my time on a day-to-day -day basis in clothes. And being able to fill out my clothes in different ways has been really cool. And just figuring out new fashion with the clothes that I have, with new clothes that I will be having to buy and all that jazz, it'll just be a new fun experience. A few other ways that I protected my peace or had self-preservation is that I allowed myself to still take pictures, but I didn't excessively body check. So I find that sometimes people get into the fact of when you are so lean, you walk past a mirror, you want to see a new line or a new ab or something to that degree, you'll flex or look at yourself in the mirror, pull up your shirt, and being able to realize like, hey, that's again not the goal that I'm going for. And so did Detaching myself from that metric was really helpful by not consistently body checking because, again, I was able to have the realization and the context that that's not going to happen because that's not where my effort is and that's not what my goal is. Um, but still taking pictures of myself and posing for those pictures and not feeling like, oh, now that I'm not competing, I can't hit a pose in a picture or I can't uh, make sure that I like the way that I look in a picture and I just have to now stand straight up and down. I've been able to play with some different angles and from the posing, from competing, be able to use that to allow me to continue to feel the most confident. Because honestly, I still hit some of those poses because those poses for so long for me have been power poses, but I'm hitting them with the understanding and the expectation that I am not going to look the same way that I did when, again, my goal was different. Another few things is allowing myself to feel good and feel positive about how I looked, of not going down a rabbit hole of tearing myself apart. If I ever found myself in a place that I was like looking in the mirror and starting to tear myself apart, I just removed myself from the situation. Honestly, I just said, not today, Satan, and walked away. Um, and again, much easier said than done, but just deciding to not have those conversations with myself, um, but allowing myself to feel good about how I looked instead of thinking that since I'm getting bigger, I look worse. And that denotion was so helpful of smaller doesn't mean better and bigger doesn't mean worse. It's being able to look at it just like there is a difference between it's not food that's good for you and food that's bad for you. It's just being able to figure out again what works for you and what is aligned with your life and your goals. And so being able to have the mindset of I can look good and feel myself and take pictures that made me feel good about myself was really, really important instead of feeling like, oh my gosh, everyone is looking at me because I'm not stage lean and now I just need to hide and no one likes the way that I look. I was leading from the front of the confidence of I like the way I look. I feel confident in the way that I do look. And part of that comes from the clothes that you're wearing. But another thing is, is I really dove into, like I said, that self-care. So I focused on things that I, again, knew were going to make me feel better and help me with how I felt about myself and how I looked externally of being able to play around with makeup, but also really focus on my skincare uh, because I wanted to feel confident without makeup and be able to have skin that I felt proud of, of being able to do my hair, but then keeping up with other metrics like getting my, my nails done or being able to go and get my hair colored or getting a self tan or a spray tan. Um, so those little things of, again, I know what I can do to feel a little bit better. And yes, we should all love ourselves in our purest forms, but I will tell you, like a tan, a self tan, 
can just change the game. And I will do anything I can to give myself that game-changing advantage and experience. So even if someone else might look at it as, oh, I don't want to do that or that doesn't make me feel my best, for me personally, just being able to keep up with things that, again, helped me feel good about myself were really important because I know how I feel without nails versus how I feel with my nails done is a completely different person and a different confidence that I am protruding. So being able to look at, hey, how can I stack this confidence in my favor and how can I play towards things I already know are going to happen? So again, that comes with having honest conversations with yourself and being able to say, hey, what are things that I've run into? What are things that I've struggled with within the past? For myself, it's been negative self-talk. It's been not allowing myself to feel confident or pretty. It's been not taking care of myself and my health and again, outward things that are going to make me feel better. And so knowing all of those aspects, I'm like, let's freaking do all of these because I know this moves the needle in the right direction. And this is a way I can proactively show up for myself. So on those days that I'm feeling down, I still feel uplifted by these aspects that I have taken control of and really poured priority into because they do matter to me and your mental health matters post-show and how you feel about yourself matters post-show and anything you can do for yourself to safeguard that, then do it. The last few things that helped me post-show were being busy as well because I had so much going on. I didn't have time to sit and think negatively about myself. I didn't have time to sit around and judge my body in a mirror. I didn't have time to just like I said, sit around and judge myself. I was busy. I had my mind on other aspects. So making sure that you have some things to take up your time, because like I said, competing does take up a lot of time, not only show day and show weekends and travel, but on a day-to-day basis, it takes a lot of time. And going from all of that time being filled to now sitting around, that gives you a lot of time to dwell and to go down a slippery soap. And I always like to remind myself, think, but not too much, and reflect, but not too long. Because if I sit there and allow myself to think too much or reflect for too long, I can find an issue. It's a superpower of mine. And I can go down that slippery slope or that rabbit hole that's very negative. And so again, knowing that about myself and being able to stay busy and have those other goals. I know people talk about it all the time, have goals outside of your physique. And I did have goals like within the gym, but honestly, having other life goals outside of something to do with fitness fitness. Well, I say that and then I realize my life goals were my career that has to do with fitness, but you get the gist. So being able to pour myself into something and again, have my accolades uh, judged on a different level was so, so, so helpful for me personally. And then another aspect is journaling. So I've never been the best at journaling, so I'm not going to sit here and act like it was my saving grace. But I will say that journaling allows you to get that emotional release without having to have a difficult conversation. So if you do feel like you're in a place that you can't vocalize either to a partner, to a therapist, to a friend, to a family member, whatever it may be, or even to yourself, you can't get your words together, just being able to take some time to journal, whether that is with pen and paper or that is some way electronic, can be extremely helpful for you to have that emotional release. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to hire the last coach that I'll ever need, then we cannot wait to get on a phone call with you. There's going to be an inquiry link below in the description box or the show notes. We'll hop on a call, talk about the service, and make sure that we get you living the life that you want to. Now, identity was a big thing for me, and this was something I was always conscientious of while I was competing, is to not solely identify myself as a competitor, not only through my own eyes, but how other people viewed me. And I was, again, very careful with this when it came to social media and how publicly I portrayed myself. And this wasn't me trying to hide who I was or trying to be shifty with the things that I shared, but again, like protecting my peace and that 
that self-preservation of I knew that I wasn't going to compete for forever. I was not going to be 50 years old getting on the stage or 60 years old still getting on the stage. I knew that. And so I didn't want to get to a point that it was no longer a part of my life. And I felt so undeniably lost because that was my identity. And I've honestly been very careful of this my whole life of not letting one thing completely consume me. I've always tried to show that I'm much more than a competitor. I've never labeled myself as Sue the competitor. I am a competitor. I'm an athlete. I am a business owner. I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a wife. I am a best friend. And I am so many other things than just a competitor. And being able to make sure I never slapped that label on myself was so helpful because within this transition, it's not that everyone is asking me about why am I not competing and everything is about competing. I really haven't gotten questions about competing unless I personally bring it up. And it's because I haven't associated the core of my identity to that. And you know what? Some people do do that and that is their identity and that is their career and that is completely fine. But again, just noting something that really helped me is not pouring my whole identity into one thing or outwardly pouring it into one thing because I wanted people to see me as more than just one thing. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about before we wrap this up is being able to talk about my hormones because, like I said, that was a heavy focus and not only being able to get my menstrual cycle and be able to get that back in a solid spot, which we were able to do within three months of ending my season, but even within that first month after I ended my season, I did start to have like a ghost uh, cycle. So I had all of the symptoms just without the bleed, and I had that for two months leading into my first cycle. But with that, we go ahead and get lab work. And with lab work, we don't get it directly post-show because we know things are going to be down-regulated. And that could cause concern of people trying to take supplements or just being scared by something being flagged as high or low when, again, we were aware that there were going to be factors that were down-regulated. We know what dieting does to your body hormonally. And so we gave my body some time. And I think we ended up going like 8 or 12 weeks post-show, being able to go get my labs and again lining up with when I had my first menstrual cycle, so we got my labs pulled in my luteal phase, which is when you do want your labs pulled, which is going to be around 14 to 19, uh, 14 to 21, depending on how long your cycle is, um, days after the first day that you bleed. So not after your cycle is over, but after the first day that you bleed. And so being able to get them in your luteal phase helps because that is when progesterone is going to be the lowest. And so that is also going to help within being able to read the metrics and making sure that you're not just seeing, oh, this is when it rises, but maybe it's lower than when it needs to be. So we were able to take a look at things. And then we saw a trend that we've seen in a lot of my lab work. So like I said, I've been doing this for a little bit of time. And I have lab work data dating back all the way to 2015, pretty regular lab work. And so we have seen time and time again that my testosterone has been low. It's been as low as three. It's been as high as 30. But we did want to see it closer to that 45 to 65 range. And so when I got my labs pulled, I was with my PCP, my doctor, and he asked if I had ever thought about HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. And I honestly felt that I had so much when I first saw that my testosterone was low. I had so much lifestyle factors or so many lifestyle factors that I needed to focus on before taking that route. And so I had thought about it before, but it honestly gone to the back of my mind because I was, you know, just in my little day-to-day phase. And so within that, he had asked, have you ever thought about HRT or TRT for testosterone replacement therapy? And I had a pretty in-depth conversation with him talking about what the risks were, what side effects were, what the benefits were, as well as being able to talk about things that were personally important to me. So being able to look at my reproductive health and what that looked like when I was deciding to get pregnant or when I would be deciding to get pregnant, that that wasn't going to affect anything. And we had a great conversation about everything. Then I went home and I had a conversation with Alex as well. And I'm not going to be giving out any dosages and I am not here to tell you that you should immediately go to your doctor and ask if you can get on TRT or HRT. Um, And it's not that you are going to have 
have major muscles popping out everywhere and all of a sudden become extremely masculine because of it. Um, this is something that if you do feel like this is uh, an aspect that you might need in your life, being able to truly have a conversation with your PCP, get lab work a few times to see where it's at looking at your lifestyle factors, um, as well as, again, having conversations with yourself or someone else that it is going to affect or someone else you want as part of the conversation. Because this was something that while it is my body and I'm able to make my own decisions, I wanted to be able to talk to Alex, not only because he has experience within working with athletes when it came to either hormone replacement therapy or PEDs, but also because he's my husband and he cares about me and he's going to ask me the hard questions. And so we had an honest conversation and really wrote down and looked at the pros and the cons. And then we did decide to go forward with it. And so I have been um, on TRT for a little bit now, and a lot of the symptoms that I was dealing with and have been dealing with for multiple, multiple years is going to be a low libido, fatigue, uh, lack of concentration, a hard time gaining muscle, as well as fat gain, especially around the hips and waist. And then you can also have a poor recovery or drive for life, life which I didn't struggle with as much, um, but that is a part of having that lower TRT. And then within the benefits, you can have better insulin sensitivity, um, decreased cholesterol, and you can also have just you can feel a lot better because your body is getting what it needs at the optimal level. And basically all of those opposites of what it can cause. So your sex drive can go up. You can have better recovery, better like drive for life, being able to not have fatigue, um, not having this lack of concentration, um, not having a hard time gaining muscle and all of those other aspects can happen um, for getting that in place. So there are a lot of great benefits for it, but I would be remiss if I didn't talk about about the side effects or the cons. And so again, this is something you would have to look in for yourself and being able to make this decision. I am not here to direct you on a decision on this. I'm talking about my personal experience. Um, but for myself, I've noticed uh, my body changing, my body odor changing, um, that I am sweating a little bit more where I normally don't sweat. Again, I have a little bit more body odor. I'm finding that I need to shower a little bit more frequently or apply deodorant more frequently. Um, my skin texture has been changing, which has been uh, an experience to, to really just have one skin texture for such a long time and then it be changing. So I've had very dry skin and now it has like dryness, but also oiliness and it's, it's something that I'm getting used to and figuring out. Um, I also have started to have like some hair grow around my the mustache area of my lip, which I'd never had before. And I know a lot of um, women and friends have had to shave like parts of their face before. So it's really not this crazy, crazy thing. And it's not like I'm growing a whole freaking beard or a mustache. It's just every few weeks, there might be a little something on the side of my lips that I'm going to need to to clean up. Um, so uh, it's also something that I did see like an acne flare, as well as just some changes within my mood, a lot of them positive. But again, some of them more negative of me being a little bit more short tempered or agitated more easily. Uh, being in a place where, again, like I said, my acne had flared up and again, my skin type changing. So I had to figure out what products and what makeup was going to work for it, um, as well as just my hormones were changing post-show overall. So I had to go through that full experience of um, all of my sex hormones changing and everything else getting into a better spot. Um, so I did just want to share that because that was a part and is a part of my journey. Um, and it's something that we'll likely talk on the podcast or you might hear me mention in the future. And that is a big part of my post show of getting my hormones in the best spot and really focusing on my health and what I want to do with my life. So what I would really give you the advice, regardless of if you are shooting for another show or not, or your life is kind of in limbo and you're not sure what you should do, 
take some time. Again, you don't have to make a decision on anyone else's time. And you can always change your mind. You can decide, hey, I don't want to do this anymore when it comes to competing. And maybe you take a year or two off and then you decide, hey, I do want to do this. And maybe your life circumstances have changed or again, your life goals. And it's always okay to align with those. And so giving myself permission to make this decision and not feel like it's final, but also not feel bad if it is final. It's okay that that's the case. And I've made peace with, again, what I want. And one more time, because, you know, I'm a disclaimer queen, I can't thank bodybuilding and competing enough for everything that it gave me, not only putting me in the space that I was able to meet my fantastic, wonderful love of my life husband, uh, but being able to show me so many skills about myself, show me how capable I was, help me when it came to organization and mindset and just being able to freaking show up for myself. It, there's a long, long list of all the things competing brought into my life, but I got honest with the time in my life that it no longer was giving me all of those pros and being able to change that direction measure myself on a different ruler, and be okay that that's different. And again, different does not mean bad or worse. It's just different, and different is okay. If you guys have any questions on anything that I've mentioned or there's something that's really helped you post-show that I didn't mention, then please feel free to reach out or comment. I'll actually make sure that in the link, in the um, show notes, that there is a link that you can go ahead and submit a question or just submit a comment um, so that I'm able to get back to all of the questions as well as share any of the comments that you guys share of things that helped you because I do think it is so helpful to hear from other people um, about about what helped them and see if it is contextual and can apply to your life. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining. As always, of course, if you could like, comment, subscribe, leave a review, all of those things really help or share this with a competitor that you know might be struggling post-show.